Ethiopian charges opposition figures <coughs> with terrorism. So that's a starting point. And we're talking about this gentleman here that you can see in this picture there. The gentleman right there. And that is Javar Muhammad, and he is an Oromo activist. <coughs> an Oromo. Well, they're an uh, ethnic group within Ethiopia. Here's Ethiopia. There's Ethiopia, so you get a sense of where Ethiopia is at. Uh, you notice that Ethiopia is right here. Here's Somalia. Somalia. Somaliland. Kenya. Ethiopia. You'll notice Ethiopia, you know, it's 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 in the mix there. <coughs> You've got Yemen over here. You got Saudi Arabia. I mean it's in that mix. It's right here. The Gulf of Aden is right there. The Red Sea. These are these are let's just say that uh, Ethiopia right here. It, it's one half of the, the significant presence. Just right there alone. Right there in in between these two uh, individual nation states, we have this, uh, whatever this is, the Bab El Mandab Strait. I can't imagine, man. I don't know who owns Param Island, but I gotta say this Param Island. Param Island. Oh, I'm trying to turn the map uh, like I do when I'm playing Rome Total War. Okay. So there's Param Island. <clears throat> and. Let's just say that geopolitically, <coughs> Ethiopia, Djibouti, Eritrea, this whole region here, Somalia, Somaliland, all that. Pretty essential stuff there, pretty essential. So that gives you a bit of a backdrop here of what we're talking about. We got this guy, uh, guy right here. Now, I I, uh, I wanted to play this video and I thought, no, I better not. I don't know. I don't want to. <coughs> I don't want Al Jazeera to just take the uh all the money that i'm gonna make from this video which is gonna be nothing but to just pretend just a principle i don't want al jazeera to put its finger on my pie so i'm not gonna play their video but it's a it's a good video and i will have links to all of this stuff in the in the stuff below whether you're watching bit shoot or youtube ethiopian singer uh, hashali handasa shot shot dead so Hachali <coughs> Hundesa is a, I guess, kind of like a folk singer that is, uh, well, I mean, he's an Oromo folk singer, and the Oromo consider them, they're a, they're a minor ethnic group in Ethiopia, and they consider themselves <coughs> discriminated against. <coughs> and uh, not, not by, by Ethiopians. Ethiopians, other Ethiopians of other ethnicities are uh, discriminating against the Oromo. And uh, <coughs> this singer, his music is identified with being fundamentally behind the 2018 elections in which this corrupt, quote unquote, corrupt Ethiopian government, probably, was overthrown in large part under his banner, under his music, well, not his, not this gentleman's music, but uh, the singer in question here would be, let me just go back and show you the gentleman in question here. Where are we at here? Show the guy. Show a good picture of him here. Okay, so <coughs> there we go. Probing to Ethiopian musicians' death. That's that's kind of what we're talking about here. So we can get on over to back to this story here. The country's attorney general had said the group would appear in court on <coughs> Monday. I just want to <coughs> let you know, back up here and. But this part here is pretty pretty significant. To give a little context here. I'm I'm not sure that uh, what's going on in America that we're not going to eventually catch up to this number, leaving more than 150 people dead in late June. <clears throat> so, some people died. Critics have accused 
Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of look, locking up those who oppose his government. So in other words, he's just locking up people for opposition to government, not because of any of the charges that he's labeling against them. Jawar Muhammad, a media mogul turned opposition politician with a huge following among young people in Oromo, was among those charged. And I imagine that's him up here, Jamar Muhammad. Uh, he was arrested in he was arrested in July as the security forces cracked down. His lawyer dismissed the charges announced on Saturday as baseless. A former ally of Mr. Abbey, Mr. Jawaris, criticized the Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> I love the way they throw that in. The Nobel Prize winner <clears throat> for not having done enough to address the long felt grievance of the Aroma pe people, the group with which they belong. And that took you to here. And, uh,. <clears throat> Al Jazeera wrote at the time, this was July 1st, that this story was, protests have erupted in Ethiopia after the police announced the killing of Haruchi Hachalu Handesa, <clears throat> an ethnic Aroma musician known for his protest songs. Thousands of fans followed Handesa's coffin through the capital while protesting his killing. The police are investigating what happened to the musician. U.S. Senators <clears> on <throat> September 2nd. U.S. Senators demand legal rights for Oromo men detained in Ethiopia. Family members in Minnesota worry and wait for charges. Jawar Muhammad with his wife, Artiza Jameda, and Misha Shiri. Credit. Photo courtesy of. Okay. Minnesota U.S. Senators Tina Smith and Amy Klubuchet have asked the U.S. State Department to put pressure on the government of Ethiopia to release. Jawar Muhammad and Misha Chiri, both former residents of Minnesota. Wow, that's interesting. The two Oromo men were residing in Addis Ababa when the government of Prime Minister <clears throat> Abiy Ahmad arrested them on June 30th and July 10th, respectively. They've been detained without charges, though Jawar has appeared for court dates a few times a week as part of a pre-trial evidence hearing process. <laughs> the letter concludes, while Ethiopia has made great strides over the last two years to build a more inclusive, functional democracy, the recent political unrest and responsive action taken by the Ethiopian government have threatened the progress that has been made. This whole story here is one of the reasons why I hate that whole terminology of whiteness and white privilege. There is majorityness. There is majority privilege. And you should use that language. It's important that you do. No, so, like... I would not want the the <clears throat> the folks here uh, the hmm, what are they? I don't want to say their name wrong. And is it the the aromas? <clears throat> the aromas. I wouldn't want the aromas to try to usurp uh, Ethiopian majority authority by by teaching their children or anybody's children about Ethiopianness and Ethiopian privilege. It demonizes people that are born Ethiopian for no good reason. You can talk about majority and that's a majority privilege. And then when Ethiopians talk about majority and that's a majority privilege, they identify well within their world, uh, they are that majority, the individuals that fall into this category of Ethiopian. And then you can have conversations. And you're not demonizing Ethiopians, but you're dealing with the phenomenon of majorityism, majorityness, majority privilege. These are things. Whiteness is not a thing. Whiteness is spitting in the face of white babies. Ethiopianness is spitting in the face of Ethiopian babies. We won't want to say either one of those terminologies. It's like when we're <clears throat> going hard against China. We always try to distinguish a lot. I, I know I do, and I talk about it on the show, even on this channel, even just yesterday. The, the way that we, well, so many people, just you just naturally you want to distinguish the CCP from the Chinese people because you don't want to create a Chinese-ness and a Chinese privileges. You don't want to do that. You don't want to demonize human beings. That's why I put a men lay against all that stuff. So Ethiopia, you know, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, make, make a suggestion to the Oromo folks there that... Uh, don't listen to American SJWs. If you really want to learn about this social justice, go to the Rajavans. Don't go to the Americans. The Americans, man, they went down a very, very, uh, very uh, controlling, authoritarian 
very coercive uh, model. Don't 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 listen to them. Their way leads to death for everyone involved, including themselves, including everyone, everyone and anyone. And uh, then there's this. Vice, Vice News. Vice News is one of these <clears throat> these outlets. The way that these things have worked is, and originally they mostly relied on the the their their alt media that was in their corporate pockets that they had bought out <clears throat> to do the tattletaling. To but the goal of the media, the way that it works, is the media appeals to the the anger and hate triggers of certain mobs that they know they can rely on on twitter and other social media organs in in, in part organically and part inorganically there's always some organic ele inorganic element to every movement that you see every single one good bad ill or otherwise <clears throat> so what they're doing is now they're tattletaling on hate on facebook to try to this enforces their their everybody's everybody's trying to bully these social media outlets and to do even more to control human thought than they already have and this is just an opportunity here so hey now we can get the ethiopian government to join the cause look at this neener 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 ethiopian government look man look what facebook's done I'm telling i'm telling Hate speech on Facebook is pushing Ethiopia dangerously close to a genocide. Ethnic violence set off by the assassination of a popular singer has been super supercharged by hate speech and incitement shared widely on the platform. You know, here's the thing, Facebook. Here's the thing, Vice. Facebook is just a tool. If you are seeing these things emerge, the tool is not really a reflection of that emergence. The tool... Okay, it may allow for the emergence more efficiently, less, I don't know. I mean, look into the peasant result of 1381. At that time, they were able to organize in a pretty lightning quick way. I know you're talking about England, but still, lightning quick way and organized a march that within two weeks had all of England almost at, the, at their command as they marched, as they took London. And then they met the King Richard there on the, uh, on the whatever field that was at whatever middle whatever field doesn't matter anyway the point is that uh i don't even know anymore i don't even know what my point is i'm it's 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 not the the tool that is facilitating it it is what is going on that is facilitating it so the measures of frictions that authoritarianness is causing within structures that's what causing that's what's causing these hatred the more that you existentially threaten the more that people will develop constructs that allow them to existentially threaten you in response and who knows who is what and which came first, the chicken or the egg? Who hated who more and who started who? But uh, it's just the same story told and repeat over and over and over again in the wash. And I mean, even, even a story like this, it just busts the whole white hate narrative, the whole whiteness, white privilege, garbage narrative, is, which relies upon even the definition of, of, of racism as they use it. It ends up meaning basically white people. Racism is white people. That's what it comes down to. And it, and it needs you to believe that somehow, that somehow, that this type of, of action, this, this discrimination, this racism, this bigotry, that it's only biologically present in white people. I mean, it's a fundamentally racist assumption. And this, this busts it. it and, and it's busted over and over again across human history, throughout the divides. If they could find a way to easily separate one another from one another in, uh, in forms that can allow one advantage power to sustain itself, then sure enough, that's what'll happen. And that's all it is. It's just majorityism. And it's not numbers, it's power. Sometimes it's power because of numbers. Sometimes it's power despite numbers. Like the whites in South Africa were the majority in terms of power so they were the that was majorityism in action is what you were seeing in it 
And now you're seeing in, 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 in many parts in South Africa, now you're starting to see the majorityism that's supported by numbers as you're starting to see the, uh, I mean, you can argue, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty targeted uh, r- r- racist discriminations against uh, whites, the killing of white farmers. That's, that ain't no joke. I mean, how, how epic, how endemic is it? I don't know, but uh, that ain't no joke. And these things, they're, they're always possible wherever you have concentrations of power. And you're seeing it emerge even amongst the quote-unquote SJWs in America who have significant advantages in power across the board. They haven't fully consolidated power, but they have mostly dominated all of our cultural power, certainly. All of our fundamental gatekeeper positions are armed by them. And there's even even when it comes down to our banks, our banks are controlled largely by by them, by this American SJWism that is using this uh, uh, <clears throat> moral supremacist appeal of uh, so-called equality and justice to invoke moral certainitarian laws on its quote-unquote customers to make humans rather than serve humans to fundamentally become engineers of humans rather than servants of humans they don't even ask the question of why do humans act nobody asks that question because nobody wants to know the answer to that question because if they knew the answer to that question they'd have a hard time justifying all the horrible things that they tell humans they should do, all the horrible forms that they forced humans into, they would understand it's kind of like when you take a, a lion and you, and you put it in the polar ice caps. Some of your programs, that's what you do with the human organism. You take the human organism, the, the, the metaphorical lion, the human organism as the metaphorical lion, and, and your programs are metaphorical solar ice, polar ice caps. And uh, the reason is because you're not really interested in creating environments for the human organism to thrive as, as it is natural for the organism. But rather, you're trying to assure that the human organism becomes what is useful for your own personal power, protection, and extinction. And that's just the way it is, folks. And I think I'll uh, end this... Uh, And the story on that, I will put the links to the stories that I referenced down below. I hope you guys enjoy the cricket. It's going to be here for a little while. Good times.